All right. Yeah, uh, let's keep you guys on your toes, especially Kirihiko. You know, the Swiss, they're all about punctuality. They invented clocks. <laughs> or at least schedules. No, you're correct, Kirihiko. It'll take me like 15 minutes to kind of get started. So really, this is just the warm-up. Hey, Poop Kid. Got uh, some new people, I think. Tennis Mahanis. Money's Wag Dog. Pop Popsicle. Kenny Roberts 84. Remember that? Ink One. Hey, Ink One. Pandemus. Sue Bayless. Hello, Sue. Good morning. Anyway, my meeting ended early, so I figure, and I have a hard out at like 12.45. I've got to go see uh, someone get their orange belt, I think, today. So I'm excited for that. Let me just tweet out that I'm, I'm going to be uh, uh, inking some fan art. And I don't mean that, you know, I'm saying fan art in that you guys aren't professional. So that's the way I'm in it. on my touch stream. Let's do that. Why does it change? Auto, auto, spell correct. Auto correct changes Jim Lee into killer. Oh, now it changes into jumper. It just does not like Jim Lee. Stop. There we go. All right. We'll say call 1130 AM Pacific time. Okay. Parademon2759. Hello from South Korea. Got crispy egg roll in the house. Tony Lewis33, you're a lifesaver. There's nothing on TV at the moment. I'm glad that I sit right above nothing on TV as a form of entertainment. Makes my heart warm over. Hello from Dubai, Sandy Boy, 2169. Parademon, 317 in the morning. Yikes. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, Superhero Somar. All right, let's get started. I have a heart out at 1245, as I said. Um, let's see. Let's acknowledge a couple people here. Ryan Harper 2, CD Lynn, PLO20. They all just subbed. All right, so I'm going to ink one of these two pieces here. I'm going to let you guys decide. Which one? One looks like a Ninja Turtle, and the other looks like a Guyfer type thing. And then um, uh, bags of spaghetti, best bar Korean barbecue. I imagine you're talking about. Um, say Trosun gotta be. It's on Olympic, three 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 one Olympic, West Olympic Boulevard, Koreatown. I think that's one. I don't know. Google it, my 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 man. And then I'm gonna uh, ink this piece by Clayton, superhero swimmer art. I thought I saw him scroll by before. It'd be a shame if he wasn't on because he was oversleeping because he stayed up so late the other night. Uh, and this is uh, obviously Vindicator, Guardian from um, a book called Alpha Flight, which was my first professional work at the Big Two. So let's see if I can get these done. Uh, and then I will finish this probably later this afternoon, evening, I think, because um, Alex really needs to color it. Hopefully Sunday. I, I should probably give him a heads up that he can't do anything on the weekend. Anyway. A superhero swimmer art here? Oh, there you are. So superhero swimmer art, we have to make a decision. All right. Well, first, let's decide on these two. All right. Um, it's a collab. And uh, so is the intent that we sell it? Like, what do you want to do with it? Sell it, and then we do the image split, 90-10. What are you gonna do with the money anyway? Honestly, you spend it on video games. Or girl, that's not gonna be your wife. Come on. All right. So, um, all right. Let's uh, keep it and frame it. What does that mean? <laughs> all right. Where's the stupid? I'm feisty this morning. I'm looking for the uh, polling section. Where is it? No. 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 Oh, my 
my God. Where's the, uh, in Streamlabs, where's the ability to pull? Anyone? Roger 35, checking in from Stockholm. Are you looking for Bjorn Hurry? Anyone? Anyone? All right. I know it's in here somewhere. El Greedy has subbed. Soul Brother One has subbed. Thank you very much. 20 months in a row. Appreciate that. Uh, it's in Streamlabs. Thanks, PK. Very, very helpful. Uh, crap. I know it, was, it used to be... Is this it? No. Is this it? No. That is not it. Where was that ability? How to, let's try that. How to create a poll. All right. Um, oh, you sent me the link. Thank you. See, there's, I knew there's someone helpful, useful amongst everyone here. Kirihiko. All right. I don't know how she. Uh, it's under loyalty, dashboard loyalty. Hmm, okay. All right. Uh, rewards, games, redemption, polls, and giveaways. Perfect. Which... Oh, can't see any of these keys. Thank you, PK. Which should I... I'm very... I'm blaming. I'm, I'm a victim today. Who? Which should I ink today? And we will put uh, turtle... Or Giver. I think that's Giver. Excuse me if it's not Giver. All right. Ninja Magic. Have I ever drawn Spawn before? Ah. Yes. All right, steak and cheese. Not only did you miss me, I missed you. We've missed each other. Tony China 19, yes. Superheroes from Mars. How much do you think we could get for it? And we're going to renegotiate the 90-10. What, you want, you want even less? 95-5? It's going down. It's smaller and smaller by the second. <laughs> um. We'll do a 50-50 split. We'll ask the people what they want to do. You actually you tell me what you want to do. You can you can um message me through Discord. I'm open to any and all. Consult with your parents. They have that thing called wisdom. All right, let's check it out. Which am I going to ink? Uh, it looks like the turtle wins. All right, let's ink that turtle. 10% for the mod helpful mods. That's right, everyone wants a cut. There we go. All right, let's get this rolling here, people. All right. Okay, 0.4 marker. This one's pretty clean. It looks like there's an energy shield or something right here. Is that is that what it is? I, I don't want to screw it up. Dex Star 671 has resubbed. This is the work of uh, Mr. Raha. Is Mr. Raha here anyway? If he's not, maybe I should hold off. I don't know. Is the the person that uh, drew this and sent it to me to get inked is... If he's not here, I'll, maybe I'll just ink the Vindicator because Superhero Swimmer Art is here for sure. Oh, it's Spinning Nunchuck. Yeah, I see what it is. It's Charge Nunchuck since he is Gambit or whatever.
Okay. I'm going to hold off then because I really have a little over an hour. So we'll, here we go. Let's move on to this. Okay, I'm going to seal a bit of plastic. All right. Um, I'm not sure what this is down here. Clayton, you need to work on your signature. Just uh, all right. I'm going to give some advice throughout this whole thing. Don't take anything personally. But I would just spend a little time separating the first name from the last name. Or if it's going to be all together, figure out a way to kind of tie in that N to the... Uh, to the D. I have some suggestions on how to sign your own name. This is what people in my generation would say too rich, like T O O. Like, so it would be like, uh, I'm not even sure what that is. Is that a L A? Clayton, right? Not Critton. All right. Okay. All right. I would go like, all right, let's see. Clay. Uh, all right, something like that. Because right now you have that's the first time I tried to forge your signature. That's not too bad. Right. Um, but I'm thinking that you might want to go and see Clayton, like really play up the Clayton Deshas, Deshas, Deshas. All right, now, but maybe you don't want to write all that because once you're signing signatures, it gets tough to do all that. So let's just go. There we go. All right, now we're getting somewhere. I would I would make sure Clay is legible. Clay, and then, all right, here we go. Clay, and then, there we go. What about that? That's kind of exciting to me. That says I don't have enough, like, I don't need to spell the rest of my, Clay D, that's, Clay D. All right. <laughs> okay, just sign everything for me. All right, here we go. All right, let's, I'm not going to jump on, I usually just start with the face, but I'm going to warm up and do something that's less, uh, you know, uh, requires less sort of motor skills. So I'm gonna start with the neck. I'm just gonna trim that in that line a little bit and just kind of do an initial pass over it just to kind of literally walk through your footsteps of how you construct figures. Um, Hold on one second. Got a text. I'm sorry. It's a busy day for a Saturday. All right. And uh, pencils are super tight, so I'm just going to modulate the lines a little bit differently, I think. Like where this was thick, I might go thin and go thicker here. But I won't second guess Clayton right away. I'll just wait. So I'm just going to hit, like I said, I'm just sort of warming up using the tool, kind of walking through. Uh, 
the structure that uh, Clayton has constructed. So right there, I just added that line for no reason. Uh, it was instinctual, so I apologize, Clayton. Just kind of came out, I didn't even think about it. So I'm not like an inker that just kind of inks whatever is like given to me. So I don't think people would like to have me ink them professionally. I will kind of draw on top of people's inks or pencils, sorry. It's traditionally called like a finisher. And usually uh, past examples where we've done this, um, the pencils have been a lot looser. So there's more freedom for me to kind of go in and do stuff. There's also a lot of like uh, bits of rendering here and there, um, dits and dats lines. And you got to be careful that if you do too much, especially like a white glove, it looks like there's schmutz, schmutz, dirt, um, that it looks weathered. Like if you were to say, hey, he just punched his hand through a brick wall and it's gotten dusty and it's got scratches on his gloves, you would probably pencil exactly the same way. So you need to be able to draw that glove, at, uh, right? So how do you draw a glove that has been weathered if it looks normally weathered all the time, right? So I would dial back the weathering on that and only weather it like this if it were to take like battle damage or something like that. Does that make sense? Please acknowledge. So cleaner, yes, cleaner. Because if I were to ink every line that you have there, it would look like, you know, like if I were to, all right, let's, okay. Oops, sorry. I'll try to do an approximation here. So there's like a line here. Oops, sorry, I went the wrong way. And I know that when you look at my stuff, I've got lines everywhere. Go like, well, how come you can put lines everywhere? Uh, okay. So th this is kind of what you have, more or less, right? So. All those lines look like he just smashed through like a brick wall, right? And so that glove has kind of taken on some damage, right? The way you can add rendering to something to give it weight and kind of give it that visual uh, kind of electricity or interest is to organize the lines so it looks like rendering and not like textures and, right? See how that further makes it look dirty? So what I would suggest is something like what you kind of started here. You can you can do that. Kind of organize it off one side and go from black and pull that out. All right? If you do that, it doesn't look like schmutz, it looks like rendering, like you're you're creating a gradation, a tonality from a dark black or a black to a mid-gray to a light. And you can kind of do it on the edges more. And the reason why is that uh, if you were going to do a pencil drawing, I'll just show you. If we're doing a pencil, let's say we're drawing a cylinder, most people would kind of render it like this, right? To create that volume, right? And so if you were to ink it or represent these grays by, through inks, it would be black here and then right see how that works so it's, a, it's more acceptable to put the rendering on the sides when you put on both sides it can look a little too busy most people pick a light source and just render off one side
Okay. All right. So I've kind of done the, the same thing and applied it to that, that uh, forearm, which is essentially this tube minus the, right? Does that make sense? I keep saying, does that make sense? Like I'm going to hear something over my headphones. Because <laughs> um, it doesn't really work even with chat because you look up and there's a bit of a delay. So you don't know if they're saying yes to you or yes to someone else's question. Yes, uh, Wildstorm CCG. Uh, yeah, it's not on Kirihiko. It's on me. I, I have all that stuff. I just need to send it out. She thankfully uh, kept track of all the um, people that won. And so it will get taken care of. Now, so, yeah, okay. I'm going to go with the outside of that line. I will beef it up like you did, but I might do it with a brush. I'll flatten that hip out a little bit, just because that's kind of my thing. But And that's the thing with inking. There's You think, well, they're just tracing the lines, but there's so many decisions made, really, at every level in terms of, do I ink on the inside of that line, the outside of the line, it can all make a slight difference. Well, it makes a slight difference and those all those little differences together, excuse me, add up to a big difference, I think. And if you've ever seen art, um, the same art kind of inked by different people. In fact, if you Google Jim Lee, Batman number two, variant cover inks, I think that might get you to where I, I hope you want to, where I would I want you to go, which is, there's this one cover I did of Batman on a gargoyle in the rain. Yes, I know it sounds like every cover I've done, but uh, there's one with his hand out. And uh, they did like a thing where they printed out blue lines and gave it to different inkers. So like Travis Shore, uh inked it. I think Liam Sharp inked one. Obviously Scott Williams did. And you can kind of compare and contrast all the, like there was at least 10, if not more, different inkers. And you can see how they're, they worked off of what I thought was fairly tight pencils and kind of came out with um, slightly different versions or dramatically different versions, depending on the uh, artist. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change one thing. So this, this body is, um, it's actually a, it's, it looks, if you were to create the mannequin, right? And here's the pelvis. The, the vector lines, the gradient lines, would go like this, right? There's like a top part. It's, it's like a cigarette box with a hole in the center. So given that, and that the camera's roughly right about here, I think, I'm going to flatten out this line a little bit and then pull it down. And all that's going to do is create a little more volume in the upper body. Okay. It might be the wrong decision, we'll see. But just moving over that one eighth of an inch might have a pretty big impact at the end of the day. And then the same thing with this, given that there's roundness to the waist, I'm gonna see if I can just, what happens if I zip it a little further around. Again, I move that line over just uh, a sixteenth of an inch. All right. That makes sense. All 
Oh, um, if you go over two mil millimeters, <laughs> Alamo paint. I don't believe in anything is cheating. Apparently, you can use whatever you want, man. It's art. Don't be so worried what other people think you should use or not use. You don't want your uh, gravestone to be. Here lies Alamo paint. He stayed away from Photoshop because other people thought it was cheating. Is that really what you want on your tombstone? I think not. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. I'm going to probably straighten out that form just a little bit and make that transition. I know you're doing this kind of thing. I'm, I'm just going to reduce the angle just a little bit and then pop out that thumb. Right. And the question is, is this arm going into space like this? Is it flat with the plane of this table, or is it coming out this way? This arm is coming out this way. This arm is actually going this way. And if it's going this way, we're seeing the hand from that angle there. So one knuckle, two, three, and the finger is going to splay away from us. I think you kind of... fudged a little bit or didn't deal with it and then the apex of that glove it's gonna if I were to draw a line right here that is the tip of that apex right as it rolls away from me it's gonna be up here more so I'm just gonna make that adjustment okay All right, now I'm going to go to the head and um, pull the ear in a little bit. See, I'm working on both sides at the same time. I'm trying to really focus on the symmetry of it. And that's the hard part, I think, about drawing kind of a face straight on. As you can see, by the time I get to the top of that head, the line gets super wispy, and that creates more volume. Like, it's almost so bright up there, or the light's hitting it, that the line kind of almost disappears. And then when we get off to the sides, the lines can get heavier, and that just very subtly reinforces this idea that this is a three-dimensional spherical shape. And uh, there's the chin. That jawline angle, I'm going to try to match it up a little bit more. I think it was a little off. And then pull down. Again, focus on the symmetry here. Not even thinking about it being a neck, but just really a drawing with this, the main vertice, the main midline, kind of right there, as you've established. And keeping these muscles here. consistent, all right? Okay. I want to be careful that the neck almost looks wider than the head, which, you know, you want to be careful about. And now I'm going to jump to the eyes. All right. 
I'm gonna take, uh, I gotta talk to my wife one second. There's something. I'll be right back. All right. We'll let the ink dry here. And I'll be right back, guys. All right. No, my wife's not feeling well, so I just need to check on that. She was uh, sick all night long, actually. All right. Okay, now we're going to do the jowls. And then pull in for the center line. Move that nose just a little to the right because the distance, I think it's a little off. And then adjust. I think just a little bit over. Light tweak. And then that center line that you had for the nose is just moving over uh, like two millimeters. Kind of ending. I don't bring it all the way down to the tip because um, that almost looks like then there's a line versus a shadow. And then I see that you got rendering here on the sides, and we'll do that. We'll do that over here too. Again, in keeping with this, we'll render off the sides rather than, like once I start rendering on that flat surface, that part of the face that's right here, then it starts looking like schmutz. Okay. And there's a shadow, and then I think the mouth is a little wide for the, I mean, not that I wanna, um, so what I'm looking for, I don't want to, uh, generic size. That's not a word. What's the word? I'm standard size. No, I don't want to, I don't want to take the style out of, no, it's not idealize. I don't want to, what's the word? Um, no, not, uh, I don't want to make it, I don't want to pull from the style you have and make it look homogenized. Yes, homogenized. Uh, uh, I said generalize already. How could it be? Anyway, so, <laughs> uh, 
yeah. And I don't want to make it look like, oh, it's my style. It's going to be a combination of ours because I'm doing finishes. So I'm trying to respect your proportions, but kind of rein it in a little bit, right? So it's not going to be quite as wide as what you have here. And then you've got like little dits and dats. I'm just going to organize it so that it, again, kind of what I would do. And then you've got rendering in here. It's tricky because, you know, it's a white costume. The more rendering you put on it. So this kind of render line, you ha I think it's clo it's better over here because it follows the, the brow and then goes up the front part of the temple, crosses over the forehead, and then it kind of wanders off to the ear. So I'm going to pull that in and just kind of um, and make it more symmetrical. And hit these lines on the eyes a little bit darker so they can pop a little bit more. And make that. You have more of a straight mouth, so I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit thicker there. And then add some of these lines here. I'm going to pull out of that Adam's apple a little bit more. And now that I've kind of established line weights, like this is my proof of concept in terms of the inks, I can then apply that look uniformly or that approach uniformly. Let me send a message, hold on. All right. And I see that there's like lines over here. All right. And those are those muscles there. And I'm just going to organize them in a different direction. You had rendering that kind of signified these, uh, what are these called? Uh, traps? No, traps? I don't know. Whatever these muscles are. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be careful with this chin highlight thing because you want to pull it down and then I think kind of cross it back over because it's kind of uh around but it's if you did a topographical map it's kind of like this so and this is the lower lip upper lip so if this is the bottom of the nose. This is the whatever the line that goes across the middle of your lips. It's like right. This represents kind of where the shadow would fall. Right? If you're gonna render it like that. And that line then becomes a shorthand of that shadow, even if I don't add that shadow in, right? That line is the breaking point between white and dark. So if you 
just do it flat across. It's very graphical, but it flattens out that shape. If you pull it down just a little bit at the bottom, it makes this feel rounder. It's a very subtle thing. All right, so I'm gonna take it and just pull it down a little bit. It's so subtle, no one will even notice, except you and I. But I think the drawing is the sum to totality of these kinds of decisions. Especially from an inker's point of view, because it's all about little micro decisions and how they impact the overall kind of aesthetic. Okay. I don't want this line to be too long because it really elongates the uh, the nose. Kirihiko, you see that? Went right, finish the eyes first. Oh no, there's no eyeballs. That's why. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna put a, a bit of a break right here like this, representing the brow kind of coming in. Again, that little line just shortens that long line, that highlight, that core shadow that runs down the middle of the nose. It's a subtle thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and Put this uh, middle peck and kind of render it the way I render it, which is like three lines and then cross hatch to kind of. And again, I saw that you're based on the neck. I think the light, the main light is over here. So everything I do is organized towards there. And I see that you're doing core shadows around and having the highlights be in the center, which is fine. So we're going to, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, so I think. This bottom part of the of the uh, chest cavity is good right there, but because this is a three dimensional shape, right? If this is the bottom of that, and this is the roundness of the torso, this other line is gonna go like this. If this is the the pec line, right? Does that make sense? All right, there we go, that looks better. So as such, you can see that if I compare it to this, and then the ribs are down here, I feel like it's gonna be like this. It's gonna be a little lower, and then the ribs are gonna come down here. So I'm doing a little bit of surgery, just kind of bringing this down. And what that does is it sells the three-dimensionality of the space above it. Otherwise, this part of the uh, sort of upper abdomen, that part of the chest, this part of the chest right there is shorter than this part, and they shouldn't be. Okay. And then that center line for the abs is going to be, I'm, I'm moving it about three millimeters to the right because we're seeing more of the right side of that chest, right? We're seeing the right side of that cigarette box over here. So the center line where the ab or like the, the belly button goes is not in the middle of this. It's in the middle of this. Okay. So the, middle of this is going to be about here, cheating it over. So I moved your center line over because you're basically putting the center line. Your instincts were right, which is that it's in the middle, the belly button's in the middle, but you're not taking the account that we're seeing the side of the body, and that side of the body adds extra sort of width that is not accounted for, All right? Hello, Freaky Deek. Giovanni Sanguili has resub. For a year. Hey, it was good seeing you at, in Dallas. Uh, line was crazy, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we stayed for a couple hours after the venue closed. And Sunday was like super chill. So if they just balance the two together. Anyway, Chuck Arnold has resubbed. Thank you very much, Chuck. Uh, General Spi SPG3 has subbed. Darth Lori, good to see you, Darth Lori. Toxic, Toxic. Angry Panda 888. 
Thanks for the art lessons. I am Space Dad. Wonderful. Mr. Dibbler, J. Belmont, Pity83. They've all subbed. Thank you for your support, guys. Uh, Jeffro Bang, Wells Portasio once said you tried to wrestle him to the ground in Barnes & Noble in Hawaii. True story? Yeah, <laughs> probably. I don't remember it, but there are a lot of people I tried to wrestle. In the offices, on concrete. Parking lots. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. My, my, uh, my shoulder's all messed up. Uh, okay, so then I have to kind of shift all the muscles. You know, you have a highlight, which is pretty cool. I like this one here, but I'm just going to shift it over. I'm going to keep it intact and just move it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh... I like this instinct of kind of going dark in here, which is the hip. This this is red. This is white. So with the red, it supports more rendering. So, but I'm gonna. So the hip. Okay, this is the pelvis, roughly. The muscles of the leg. If you were to draw the side of the body. All right, the calf is the easy one. Everyone knows that. Heel, toe. Oh, I, sorry, I don't draw that part of the body. Uh, kneecap. There are some tendons here. There's a muscle, a big muscle here. These are the quads, so there has to be four. There's one, there's two, there's two on the other side. There's probably a muscle, like right there. The glute, hmm, I think it goes like that. And then there's like... All you have to do is kind of create these Y shapes. I can sell you anything. You like, because you guys don't know. Uh, you're believing, I'm just making it up, right? So, um, yeah. So, there, okay. Right? I'm an anatomy major. Who's that? Have you ever met an anatomy major? Yeah, I'm an anatomy major. There are no such thing. No such thing. Okay? Because, honestly, if there, the anatomy majors would be amazing artists, but they aren't. They aren't. No offense to anatomy majors. but Or you would think, like, oh, people that are personal trainers, they would be able to draw really well because they are so, uh, you know, knowledge about the human form. Like, no, they know how many times you have to lift that heavy piece of metal to get stronger or to look better. But, the people that really know anatomy are the liars like me, the comic book artists. We make it look real, and trust me, these muscles don't exist. Uh, you take a photograph of a real athlete, you look at it, it looks nothing like this, all right? You guys think it's realism because we, we make you think, right? It's like magic. All right, um, so I'm going to go in, and I think you have a crest, and I think it's just too broad, and I, I feel like it should have... You need to cheat a little bit more to kind of fake it, right? And that means creating those Y shapes, right? So here's that Y, right? And then I'm going to create another Y shape like this. Kind of following your form. And you have this bit of rendering here. If I just bring it down like that. This shadow represents the end of that muscle group. So we're just going to give it a little bit of an end shape instead of a flatter shape. Like, look, So you see the curvature creates that round missile kind of circumference there. And then the shadow is a core shadow, just like this core shadow on the chin. It reflects sort of the circular aspect of it. The kneecap's a little flatter, so I'm just going to cut off the top part of that shadow there, bring that down, and just kind of create like a, it's like almost like a little door, a little space door on the side of this spaceship right here's like the window here's the door handle right it's like a little docking bay door and like a little access port for waste and mail goes underneath there right does that make sense fastest lateralis what are you a harry potter fan what, what's going on like we're doing art here anyway uh so Okay.
Okay. Doors are knees. Yes. Think about it. Knees are doors. Knees are doors. Not doors are knees. Come on, Pandemus. Keep up with the class. I, you know, I, I'm going to require an application for you guys to get into these these uh, these chats. <laughs> Can you imagine? I think I failed. Boys. All right, should we start over from the beginning? All right, let's go. Let's just walk you through. We're going to start with the neck again. All right. Russ Heath, Russell Heath asks, how far can Anchor go to adjust RV4 is considered too far? It depends. If you're in better shape than the penciler, I say you do whatever the heck, <laughs> whatever the heck you want. What's he going to do about it, right? But if like if you're inking Doug Mankey, I would not mess with that guy. I would be super respectful. I would draw. I would ink every single line he put down. So that's really kind of how it works in the business. Yes, please use the toilet. Go, go, go. We'll wait. Wait, did he say number one or two? I don't have that much time. Thank you very much, CTC Firebird, for resubbing. 20 months. Gosh, have we been doing this for 20, 21 months? Languidness. Who's Doug Mankey? All right. Detention Center. Google Doug Mankey. M A N K. H E. He's an amazing artist. He's on Detective. He's also on Instagram. Check it out. Explain these again. All right. All right, here we go. Um, while we're waiting for Wildstorm CCG. I hope he lets us know when he comes back. I'm looking for a Sharpie. Not a gold Sharpie, but a black Sharpie. I don't see one. Ah, here we go. All right. All right. Here we go. Uh, think of a... Mm, all right. Think of a space transportation tube, tube, right? Oh, he's back. Okay. If you were to access this, you would have to create a door. And the door would be human size. But let's say it's like this. Because people are wider in their shoulders and their legs. Okay, see how like it's starting to pop out a little bit now? That's kind of what a knee is, and this part here is the kneecap. So when you think about knees, uh, there's a Y shape. You have a, you have muscles that come out to the thing, but then how do you transition to the bottom part? Think of it as a door into the thigh, and then out of the bottom, the calf st sticks out. But you need that door, and that door kind of sticks out a bit, okay? The stairs, there are stairs that go down to the bottom of the calf. A diagonal. Okay. All right. All right. Um, that was just underdrawing for a different drawing. There's no, don't worry. I'm not going to, I wasn't going to do anything with that. Um, what happened to my marker? This is frustrating. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So there's that door, right?
And here, the stairs that lead to the back of the calf are inside there. So really, it's this line that, rather than that line, right? Okay. We've got the, cap, the, the ankle line, which I like. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to put a couple of these lines at the top because they kind of show direction. All right. Now having done this, I'm going to grab a brush and um, there is no doormat. Tardis fan five, six, seven. Do you have any tips for foreshortening legs? Yes, make them shorter. All right. That is the truth. Okay, now, sometimes people, when they draw shiny uh, metallic costumes, they will draw a, a um, highlight, a brim light around the edges like that. Okay. He has chosen not to, which is fine. All right. So, um, I will go ahead, all, respect his wishes, and go all the way like that. But if you do that, there's no point in doing the line weights that he did before, because as you notice, when the ink goes right up to the line, whether this line was thick and this line was thin, it doesn't matter, because it's the shadows that predominate. So I wouldn't be so focused about... So he's basically rendering around the muscles. So what I'm gonna do is ink in all these parts first, and then take a, um, a marker and then pull out of the black areas, create the values, the gray values that will be the uh, transition points. It's a little fuzzy to me exactly what's black and what's not black. I feel like he could have penciled it a little darker. That's why a lot of times people kind of trap areas and then just put an X. Okay. I think these are the areas that are supposed to be black. Go down here. I don't see, so it's odd to me, like, it's black here, but I don't think there's anything black here, but, so when did this stop being black? Because there was definitely black hip here, so I'm going to just do that, park it, park it there for now and see what happens. Let's see, we'll see how that looks. Is this black in here? I don't know. Go with it and see what happens. All right, so if light's up there, it's the bottom part of that muscle the bottom part of this muscle, the bottom part of that. And we're gonna just go in there like that. 
But like I said, I do like this instinct of kind of just doing that. It's almost like a shadow created by the leg coming up. We will ink the end of that. We'll close, we'll, uh, ink in the door, the mail slot there. The ladder goes like that. So that's a relatively big change I've made. And then he's mostly going to black, I think, in the leg. He's saying because it's foreshortened, I'm going to commit to mostly black. And honestly, I think at that point, do the little highlight there, and then kick everything to black here. Add that little thing that makes this thing pop out a little bit more. And see how that looks. I'll probably make. All right. Oh, uh, there should be a line here. All right, I will have to figure that out. That's when I get the marker back in my hand. Let's go ahead and... Like, I'm guessing this is black. It's not super dark, so it's hard for me to tell. But I'm pretty sure it is, but I don't know. Let's see what happens. Right now, Clayton's going, No! No! You idiot! Can't you see? <laughs> uh, there's a white line there. I'll fix that later. It's black. Well, yeah, well, you have to say it's black now. <laughs> uh, see, I don't know if this is black or not, but I'm going to leave a little white there. We're going to do some rendering. It'll be kind of fun. So if this is all black, then that rendering is kind of useless. So you got to be kind of, you got to figure out, well, what is, you can't render in next to a black area. So it's one or the other. So like that rendering there on that bottom part of the rib cage got, got obliterated by that black shape I just put in. I think that's what I see here. I'm just also my eyes are not great, so I apologize, Clayton. What's going on here? All right, this is black. This is black. That's black, I think. Something like that. More or less, as we like to say in the inking business. Pencil is like going, what do you mean more or less? I gave you one job. One job. There are lines. Ink the lines. Okay. So now, sorry, that line has to carry through, all right? Doesn't it go down? Hold on. Does the line go down? Or is, am I, 
misremembering the suit. There is no line. I don't think, okay. This will become rendering. All right. Then I think we're done with the black shapes there. Okay. What we are going to do though, is uh, we're going to create a background, which uh, I will need to get some tissue paper for. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't know what that is. No, that's not going to work. I need to be right back. Hold on. All right, Nova Prime X has resubbed for 12 months. Thank you very much. One year reunited, it feels so good. That would be good lyrics for a song. Player 89 uh, thank you for hosting. One viewer, love it. Um, Lance Childer's Art has resubbed. Very cool. All right. So what I'm going to do, put some ink on a, like this. Just kind of, okay. And what we're gonna do, before the ink gets absorbed too much, is we are going to create a faux background. Thank you very much, uh, Giovanni. Anatomy, I just make up, draw a bunch of Y shapes, knees are doors. This is why we love the streams, you're the best. <laughs> well, I'm just giving you the straight scoop, guys. Thank you for your generosity. I'm much appreciated. Okay, let's see what happens if we get in here. If you're having a tough time kind of drawing something, it's I think you're not understanding it maybe conceptually so if you think about it as something else you can draw the something else and then not worry about the thing that was hard to draw right This is the last bit of toilet paper I had. I have to break another roll here. I'm running out of space. Actually, I just have to do these parts here, I think. And then I can do the rest with a brush. I think. See what happens. <clears throat> All right. Clayton, your signature is down here. Uh, we'll have to figure out something. Figure out something. <clears throat> Excuse me.
Okay. All right, and then over here, we're gonna <clears throat> here we're gonna. Signature. Okay, so I obliterate that signature, but I've got an idea. Let's see what happens if I do this. <clears throat> All right, so I need to get um, a little more tissue paper. Be right back. Okay. Let's see what happens. Fifteen minutes ago, thank you, Kira. <clears throat> I'm almost done, as they say, or as I say. Put a 2019 here. I'm going to ink that as well. And then I'll put my signature over there. All right. <clears throat> While we're waiting for that to dry, 
I'm going to um, finish doing some of the rendering and just kind of pull out of the areas here. His pencils are light enough that I don't really need to erase them, although I will erase some in the white areas to kind of clean it up. But you can see as I pull in, render out, And now I'm just kind of reacting to the drawing. Things I'm just seeing things uh, for what they are and just going like, oh, it'd be great if there was a line here. So to me, it's not really about inking at this point, it's just about <coughs> completing the drawing and reacting, in the, and in that sense, reacting to kind of what's, what's there, the decisions we've made thus far. So this is your opportunity to make changes, um, ink things that you forgot to ink, A lot of these dark areas here. I'm going to render and pull out of these pure black areas to kind of create that transition. Let me tell my wife I'm be ready and uh, ready at twelve forty five. that at all. That doesn't work for me. Okay. That ties in that rendering. A little bit more. Pull that out. Let's create more round effect. This thing has to be darker. This darkness has to be consistent and applied through. Why not?
right. <clears throat> M. Friel has resub. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Action. Uh, what? No. Sorry. Ooh, I think I got ink on the back of my shirt. <clears throat> I have eight minutes. All right. <laughs> Superhero swarm. I would. I was just joking about the ninety ten. Man, you could have a hundred percent of it. It's cool. I was just kidding. Uh, but I want to shout on Insta or something like that. We'll do. You can have 100% of it, but the shout on an Insta, it's going to cost you two grand. So if you can just put that money in the mail, we got a deal. All right. Uh... <laughs> All right. I'm going to go in and erase some of the lines that are kind of dark. Just lightly. It was fairly light already. Like I said before in the other stream, if you erase all the lines, like sometimes you have to re-ink them because you realize that they're too light. In, in sketches like this, I like to have some of the pencil line represented. I think it looks good. Clayton apparently does not have um, the resources to to get an ink uh, to a, a marker that has is full of ink. Um, I'm not sure what happened. Some of it's dark, some of it's light. Um, I think you actually penciled your signature and then inked it. I don't know. I'm gonna ink your signature. All right, so it's just a little bit darker. Then um, put my signature over here. And then we're going to do some white out and that'll be done. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I like kind of the these kind of representational lines that kind of suggest energy. But I'm not going to do it consistently around. I'm going to see how, if I can just kind of pull off doing suggestions of it and letting the kind of the fade of the, uh, the smear kind of carry the rest. Does that make sense? It's just a texture consideration. Right, these representational lines that suggest energy tell the mind that it's energy, and then the smears kind of create more atmosphere, more of a realism or sense of glow. That's less representation. Or hmm, no, these are these lines are graphical. Sorry, the smears are representational. I don't know. You figure it out.
three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. All right, so as we close this up, I want to thank our mods, uh, Kirihiko, Crispy Egg Roll, our part-time, our unofficial mod, PK, for being here three days in a row, I believe. It's crazy. Um, thank you guys for your support in making this a hospitable, um, pleasant chat environment. And I want to thank uh, Superhero Swimmer Art for being so game and letting me mangle his art on stream. And uh, we are going to go raid someone else. This is, we usually try to drop in on a creative for fun. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I know the weekends are precious, and I appreciate you guys hanging out, spending some time with me. And Mr. Rafa, if you ever see this, we will ink yours another time. All right, so we're just going to do some stars and energy crackle here. And... Uh, I will have to um, post this on the Discord channel later when I get back, but I gotta, I gotta split. So don't want to get any art on the turtle or ink or white out on the turtle. All right, I think I'm done. 12.45, perfect. Thank you very much, guys. We're going to go raid someone up, and uh, here we go. You can see the whole thing. You know what, though? I'm going to... I don't like the fact that this, this line just kind of go nowhere. Let's shoot this. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and do that. See what? Like he's flying. And one more up here, like this. All right. Let's see if we can kind of get the whole shot in here. Thank you very much, guys. You'll see this later. Watch out for this kid, Clayton. All right. Where are we going to raid? Uh, where's the... See you guys later.